This video is an introduction to evaporation and the design of evaporators. First, however, we need to define what we mean by evaporation in this course and how that is different from distillation and drying. In evaporation, we separate a volatile component from a non-volatile component. In distillation, we separate components with different volatility. And in drying, we separate a volatile liquid, often water, from a solid material. We cannot go into details for all separation processes in this course, so why have we selected evaporation? One answer is that to do design calculations for evaporation, you need to understand several things that are important in biotechnology and chemical engineering. Mass balances, energy balances, heat transfer, how the steam table works, boiling point elevation, and energy recovery. Another reason is the large range of industrial uses of evaporation, including, for example, black liquor evaporation in pulp mills, producing used concentrate, milk powder, pharmaceuticals, proteins, sugar, and drinking water from seawater. An evaporator unit usually consists of three subunits, a heat exchanger, a phase separator, and a condenser. The heat exchanger boils the feed F and the phase separator separates the vapor V from the liquid L. Ideally, the vapor should be totally free of liquid droplets. Another way to say that is that there should be no entrainment, in Swedish, ingen medryckning, of droplets up into the vapor flow. After the phase separator, the vapor condenses in the condenser. It is the temperature in the condenser that determines the pressure of the feed side of the heat exchanger. On the hot side of the heat exchanger, we usually have condensing steam, S. That is, we take in steam and let that condense, releasing the evaporation enthalpy of the steam. The pressure of the steam determines the temperature on the hot side of the heat exchanger. Our course focus is on calculating required heat exchanger area, steam consumption, S, steam economy, V divided by S, and understanding the pros and cons of multi-effect evaporators. I mentioned that the condenser determines the pressure on the feed side. Why is the pressure important? Well, consider a 90 degree water solution uh, containing one gram of sodium chloride per liter at one atmosphere uh, or one bar. Uh, what happens if the pressure drops to 0.5 bars? Pause here, pick up your nearest steam table and try to answer that question. What happens is that the fraction of the liquid water will turn into water vapor, and the remaining liquid fraction will have a higher concentration of sodium chloride. Thus, you can bring a solution to boil by lowering the pressure. Evaporation by suddenly lowering the pressure is called flash evaporation. We will not be focusing on flash evaporation in this course, but rather designs where the feed is gradually heated and the fraction of vapor gradually increases along the feed side of the heat exchanger. We will assume that the pressure is the same along the equipment, that is through the heat exchanger and the phase separator all the way to the condenser. This pressure on the feed side is the pressure at which water boils at a temperature in the condenser. Hmm, what did I say there? Well, if the condenser temperature is 99.61 degrees, the pressure is one bar. If the condenser temperature is 20 degrees, then the pressure is 0.0234 bar.